All right, hey guys, Tarzan here to discuss the meta or the current, you know, patch 9.24 with how the game state currently is. We're here with none other than the best top one in NA Super Top is Shin Shin. I thought his Shin Shin was a great fit for the show because he's pretty knowledgeable and plays the game pretty much all day. So feel free to introduce yourself, Hash. Yeah, I'm his Shin Shin. All right, nice to meet you, Hash. Anyways, let's get this show on the road. We have a lot of topics to discuss. So yep. first topic would be Drakes and Souls. What is your thought on the four Drakes? Cloud, Ocean, Infernal, and Mountain, and then the souls that come forth? Well, the entire... Okay, so the entire thing about souls, originally, right? When they had it on the PBE for the longest ass time, originally it was the first two souls... Or sorry, the first two dragons don't count to the soul, right? right. So, like, a winning bot lane that gets the first two dragons isn't going to get the soul faster, right? Mm -hmm. And... Then after that, you know, once the dragon starts getting the respawning dragon, if you get three of those ones, that's when you get the soul. And that's how it was on the PBE for the longest time. And then right before they, they launched the season, they said, oh, no, 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 now it's four of any, even if, you know, even the first two. And I feel like that just made bot lane way more impactful. And honestly, I feel like it was almost deceptive because, like, on the PBE, it was like, okay, so... I guess top lane gets like a bit of relief, you know, they don't have to have a winning bot lane to get a soul. But now a winning bot lane can get up their win condition at 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes, honestly. I mean, 20 is too short, but they can honestly have four dragons in 25 minutes, which is insane. It's okay. insane that like a winning bot lane can just have a win condition because souls are basically. Can I win cut condition. you off there? We have 14 topics. We can't spend you know, half an hour on souls. Which drakes do you think are the best? Which one do you think are weak? Which souls should be reworked or are too strong, too weak, etc.? Assuming, oops, sorry, assuming souls are supposed to be win conditions, cloud and cloud soul are terrible. There are so many champions where ult cooldown is just totally irrelevant. It, it's situational, so yeah. I don't think it's terrible though. It's pretty weak. Uh, mm -hmm. Mountain's pretty good, but I feel often Mountain just kind of comes in. And it's it's very rare. Like there, there's only I, I've only had one game, and I've probably played like three four hundred games this season already. I've only had one singular game where I feel the Mountain Soul was really impactful. Not the Soul, right. the Dragon itself. Like we had two Mountain Dragons, and I was like, oh shit! Like this makes my Jax really actually tanky. But, yeah, I mean, normally it just kind of gives you a little bit of armor and a little bit of MR. Uh, I feel like it hurts uh, AD casters because you can negate their lethality a little bit. But, honestly, I, I just think the Cloud Soul, considering souls are supposed to be win condition, that one's way too weak. The other three are probably fine, but Cloud Soul blows. So, what about the Drakes, like, before the whole soul stage, basically? They're relatively balanced, I feel. I think... Ocean might be a little bit over nerfed. Uh, I mean, I, would say, I think Infernal's weak. Now it's like two Infernals equals one Infernal from like last season, basically. I think Ocean also got a bit over nerfed. I think Cloud's okay, and I think Mountain's a bit over tuned, honestly, because it can like stack off your runes potentially if you're going like you see a lot of supports going like Armor and Martin Lane. Same thing with Conditioning Rune. So you have like a lot of free stats from not even like you don't have to build Armor and MR anymore. Yeah, that's one theory. thing actually I've noticed is a lot more people are going conditioning and just kind of basically fishing on getting that mountain dragon. It kind of feels shitty that like only one, t like potentially only one team can have the mountain dragon and it's kind of RNG if it spawns at all and it's kind of RNG whether your team's winning or not to get it. But like it's good enough that a lot of people will just pick up the conditioning, have the weaker early game and just kind of like go fishing and be like, well, I hope I get it. Exactly, or unless whichever team has a loft pretty much gets Drake all game, so. Alright, let's go to topic number two, jungle camp XP. So I probably am better to speak about this. I, I know you play jungle, you play high crim, you play Dr. Mundo. Those are like your top two, right? High crim, Mundo? I've kind of stopped playing jungle. <laughs> I wonder but why. It's worse than top, huh? No, it's because Mundo got Mundo and Zach got blown the fuck out by this patch. Really? What do you mean by that? I... Like, better? They're worse now? worse i think mundo is a lot better personally i think he's terrible like I, I think optimally the junglers that are doing best are spam gankers that can really click really quickly clear one or two camps to get to like a level threshold and then just go back to ganking 
Uh, it so depends. Like, I mean, if they're getting something from the ganks, yeah. But if you're only getting flashes and actually no re no rewards from it, like getting a kill and XP worth worth of minion wave or just the kill itself, then they're not really doing much. If their lanes aren't good enough to get ahead on their own, they're not really getting ahead. Because I feel like junglers are more becoming enablers. You look, you watched competitive play last year, right? And junglers be down two, three levels. Imagine now in competitive, because your laners take or your eighty senior mid take your buffs. Your top laner takes your top side, and then what do you have left? Krugs, and Krugs are like terrible, and that's like depending on the side you're on, whether you're on blue or red. So I feel like you're going to be even more behind now in competitive play, and once TCS happens tomorrow, I think a lot of junglers are going to have... The best junglers like will they, still struggle tomorrow. I feel like they keep making the jungle shittier without actually fixing what makes it broken. Exactly. I 100% agree with that statement. Like, they just keep beating the shit out of jungle, and it's like, as a laner, you don't... like. When you play a laner, right, the jungle nerfs are like, oh, that doesn't really matter. Like, none of this matters. Like, if they camp my lane, I lose, and I can't stop them from camping my lane. But when you play a jungler, it's like, like, when I play Mundo, right, it sucks that I could be 30, 40, 50 CS above a dude who's my same level. And it's like, okay. Yeah, it's really something. The thing is, like, right now, last year it was your red side was the most important. Now it's your blue side, which is Wolf's Gromp. And... Even if you like prioritize those camps for the most part, like you don't get that much XP anyways. If you compare like a minion wave with a cannon that laners get basically, you're getting like two or two and a half camps worth of XP from getting one cannon wave. It's re it's really insane, and it's just like the amount of resources you for camps because you know they got buffed in terms of like durability. They're hard to kill, more HP, and the amount of little resource you put to actually push in a wave is really just beneficial for laners rather than junglers. I mean, I think the whole problem stems from the fact that junglers can get level 3 quickly. From there, they spam gank. They reach the threshold for 4, go back to spam ganking. Reach the threshold for 5, go back to spam ganking. I mean, when you look at the most popular junglers, I'm, I'm looking at this right now. The most popular junglers, Masters Plus. Lee Sin, Olaf, Rek'Sai, Echo, Elise. Like, they're all the same kind of jungler, you know? They punish it's, bad players, yeah. It's not, like, there's not, like... You see Graves at 9, popularity, Karthus at 8, and then Kindred all the way at 12. So, there's, like, in the top 20, there's only four junglers who are trying to farm in popularity. Yeah. Like, so... It's just... Well, it's just, there's too much worth. Like, honestly, at a certain point, they just need to, like, punish getting kills, actually. Like, I remember a couple years ago, maybe I mean, more than a couple of years ago at this point, they had reduced kill gold in experience for like the first 10 minutes of the game. I mean, maybe just go back to that. I'd say like there needs to be a balance between that, which you just said, the XP you get from kills and assist and the amount of XP caps give. So this is why you saw a lot of like Sejuani. Was it season eight, like beginning season eight or something? A lot of Sejuani, Jarvan just going full tank and just playing for kills and vision. And then it kind of like shifted for a bit, but with how the game's going right now, I can only assume it's going to be like similar champions to that. Like, champs that are good early game that are also like have good utility mid to late game. Something like Lee Sin obviously comes into mind. Anyways, let's go to the next topic. It's been eight minutes. So, I guess every like topic will go four to five minutes max because we have 14. And I'll try to get like an hour max, hopefully. All right. But anything else you want to add to that or is that fine? Uh, I mean, I honestly just think they need to bring the hammer down at a certain point and. Like, instead of just continuously making junglers shitty in the mid game, they should just hammer down the early game. Like, if they want to buff jungle XP, if they want to make camps spawn faster, fine. But, like, they just keep hurting junglers mid game and ignore the fact that games are so fast that level 3, 4, 5 being spam gank can decide a game. And, like, okay, they're, they're nerfing jungle, they're making it less important, but they're not, like, fixing it they're just making it shittier to play they're making it less fun to play but not fixing anything all right adding on to that there's like one thing i want to just bring up the fact is that you need three camps for level three right if you do blue gromp red but or you know red side but if for level four you need six camps you see how like how that play comes into play no okay never mind topic three but, no, I mean, I see it. I just, I don't really have a comment. So. All right, great. Distribution of cast. Like, we kind of spoke about this earlier, but, like, let's be real. TF played, I don't know if, like, he struggled or he became more of a for fun streamer, but he would get rank one every year, right? And mostly yeah. his style depended around, like, just 
winning, winning top, going on the split push, and just taking top side camps, right? So something like that is really a detriment to junglers because it's like if you're losing your top side in the entire game, like your blue buff, your gromp, your wolves to enemy top laner, and it's like if you give you a red if you're on blue side. And like, what do you have left to work with if your team's behind? How can you actually come back into the game? Because they're gonna get objectives and get your camps, so you really have no way of coming back into the game. This is why, like in pro play, you see the best teams that there's no coming back for the enemy team because they have nothing to farm, there's nothing for them to do. So it's like even if you just minimally fall behind, it's just a snowball effect and it just gets worse and worse. That's why you see again the Koreans and the Chinese always dominate worlds because they just they slowly just bleed you out and take over the map, and you can't come back if they just play properly. Um, I found it easier to take jungle camps. That's about it. I mean, a lot of times the jungler will just like do that shit where they're like camping bot and I'm top. So they just like, they do their two camps, go to gank, do their two camps, go to gank. And I'm just kind of free to take the grumps and shit. That's great. So how do you think a jungler should be able to come back in the game if all his lanes are losing? I mean, it is solo queue, so people will make mistakes, but like in competitive play, I feel like you're going to see junglers a lot more under level like we already went over earlier. Uh, I feel like there's no counter blur at all if you lose early game and enemy team's better than you. I mean, I think it really just comes down to the fact that like early kills slash assists are just too worthwhile right now. And like the difference between, okay, let's say Kha'Zix, right? Like if Kha'Zix gets that level 3 kill, the whole game can change you know, because he can get level 4 way easier now, which lets him gank with a stronger thing, which lets him get level 5 way easier. And But if he if he doesn't get that kill and he gets stuck at level 3, and yeah, he has to clear 3 more camps, like, he's out, he's out for a while, you know? Like, exactly. he's not ganking, he's not doing anything for a long time now. So, what do they do? Nerf kill and assist XP? Nerf minion wave and then buff jungle camps a bit? I mean, I think they should... Do, I think what they should do is, starting at zero, like zero seconds, I think kills and assists should give 33% less uh, gold and experience, like 200 gold and however much experience, and it should slowly bleed up, and then at like 15 minutes it should be normal. But that would be like a huge buff to champs like Nasus Cast that I just want to play for late game, Vagar. Uh, I mean, considering they just fucked up Conquer, I don't think... <laughs> that they're really that worried about champions being broken by a change oh yeah i forgot conquer good point well for that 15 i guess all right next topic the doran's items d blade d rank d shield thoughts go you're a laner so you should know uh i think d blade's good doran's ring is good i'd kind of like it if doran's blade had like a little bit of a buff for melee are you but kidding Doran Okay, I guess for melee maybe, but the item's just super overtuned right now. It's so OP, I build it on junglers. Like, after getting my warrior, I always buy a D-Blade if I'm ahead, or even even. It's just so strong and valuable, because the game's end so early right now. So, yeah, just well, I think such a better mid game transition. Thing, I think Doran's shield should have a slight scaling component on it, because it's really good at keeping... Like, they buffed it so it was like better at keeping you alive on the first back against ranged characters. But because it doesn't scale, the second back comes, and and even with the Doran shield buff, you probably bled a good amount of CS. Like, it's not like, oh, now you can walk up and take all the poke and get all the CS. And by the second back, it's not really helping you anymore, and now you're getting poke into oblivion, but you still haven't completed your items. Yeah, but that's the thing, they're, they're Doran's items. So I guess maybe for shield, make it a bit weaker early and then make it scale, potentially, and then... Well, I think... I mean... Like, even something like, instead of 40, it heals for 35 plus 2 per level, you know? Yeah, that would be decent, but, I mean, again, Doran's Blades, or Doran's items in general, want to be sold at a certain, like, mid-game point, unless you're ADC. Cause yeah, Blade, I mean, <laughs> they should be sold. Like, I'm not saying it should scale, you know, for, you know, to be not an item you want to sell, but, like, compare that to Doran's Blade, 3% lifesteal remains somewhat useful for a very long time. True. Whereas Doran's Shield, again, by second back, it's just like, okay kind of dead now have you played versus any like six d blade rangars or mfs recently i've seen a lot of mf stacking dorn's blade yeah it's pretty pretty oppressive i'd say they should make the lifesteal component maybe unique or just nerf some of the base stats other than that any comments or not really i mean i would actually like it if they brought back some more of those like 
like there used to be a lot better early game items that you could like build and then sit on like cutlass before it got nerfed 50 times or like the old brutalizer or um i don't know like wriggles, wriggles. way back then and they don't really have any of those now i don't even know what wriggles is but back in my day the stuff that was like the most op was like the red pot and then the, the flask nine pots you had a free lane as like a call or katarina or something well I don't know. I mean, if they had more early game items, especially aimed at like, this is good, you know, you don't have to complete the whole item, like, this is good enough for a while, you know, it, it'll it'll help you out, do this for now, but right now that just seems to be Doran's Blight. If you if you want to kind of get, if you want to spend, like, the gold on your first back into an item that's going to do well, it just, you stack Doran's Blade. Alright, so do you think it should, like, give you a mid-game Doran's item, or just another item in general that, like, a component of a specific item, something like Spectrous cow without items terrible, but it's like it's somewhat good mid game because of its if it's well, I mean, like, okay, so better, basically. Like if, if Spectre's Cowl was like let's say it had 35 MR again, right? So you could sit on a Spectre's Cowl, get a decent laning phase off it. Or um let's say them like Jarm's Fist. Like if Jarm's Fist was a cheaper item, right. so you could like okay, I'll sit on Jarm's Fist, good you know, because all literally all it does is damage and HP. It's so like, let's say Jarm's Fist went down to a thousand gold. Okay, great. I'll pick up Jarm's Fist, get a little bit of damage, a good chunk of HP if I stack it up, and, you know. Mm hmm What about Seeker's Arm Guard? Isn't that, like, your favorite item? Oh, yeah, I love Seeker's. <laughs> How about they cap that, oh, you know? Like, no? Cap it? So, so maybe I don't get killed twice be Dude, no, but the thing is, I've been playing more, and it's disgusting. Yeah, I, you I've get been Seekers, you. and you just you run. You just rush it every You day. literally just run them down. You just walk into them. It's like, I'm Mord, I have Seekers, you're dead. Yeah, Mord is really disgusting right now. Anyway, let's go to topic number five. So we kind of talked about this earlier. I mean, buffing buff XP for more fights. Like I said, if the game is really snowballed, enemy team is really ahead, it's like, if you don't have a number advantage and it's going to like slowly bleed out, lose your buffs, and then there's more of a compensation for getting them and just counter jungling. Do you think that's a potential, something that can come into the game in the near future? Um... I feel like if you buff buff XP, you just lead to more shenanigans like Karthus. I mean, Karthus shouldn't even be a jungler, honestly, we're all aware of that. They kind of like, I don't even think Karthus is OP. I think he's good against bad players, like if you just free farm. But for the most part, he has like no early game impact. Everyone knows where he's going to be. He's going to be either rushing level 3 blue side and looking for an invade, or I doubt you early game, or just full coin level 4, and he'll be at the uh cross map side of the map at like three minutes ten or so if he cleared fast three minutes five seconds but that's why i feel like he's super good against bad players because everyone knows what he's going to do and it just goes down to if your teammates are fighting properly or not and then you take advantage of the map because you know he's going to just gonna farm your jungle and his jungle all game hello i don't know i don't really <laughs> mind cart this like if they have a cart this it's like okay maybe he could get fed and take over the game but it's kind of like Vladimir in a way, where it's like, okay, it's really frustrating. Okay, it's really powerful, but it's not an issue for me now. You know, I, I'd much rather worry about junglers that can kill me and end the game early than junglers that can end the game late, because even if you're overpowered and you win late, it's like, that might never happen. You might never even get to that late. Right, and to be honest, if they buff buff XP, it's going to be better for laners than it's for junglers, because junglers are already under-leveled, right? So it's like... It might give them an incentive to actually take the buff and therefore getting their laners make or making them less relevant. So anyways, you want to skip that go to number six now? Or any other comments? Support damage? Dude, since they fixed death recaps, I, I think it's honestly what it was. They fixed death recaps, and now people are actually noticing like how much damage supports are doing, and everyone's kind of like, well, that's fucked up. Like, why am I... Why am I taking as much damage from the support as I am the AD carry? What's going on here? Yeah, I thought not was stupid, and then I saw a few Leona just like 100 to 0 my ADC's 1v1, and I actually was in awe, because her cooldowns, she's gotten so many buffs in a row, but no one played her for a bit, right? And then once she was playing competitive play, or like Worlds or whatever, people started picking her up. She was mostly used as a counter pick to like Rakan or something, but I think she's super disgustingly broken, and same with Nautilus, you can, you can 1v1 your ADC. I've been 1v1 by not support as jungle by the way i think i was playing graves this not just walked up to me and beat the hell out of me and i had double buffs i could even i was like doing zero damage to him actually through his shield through his aftershock i think he even had shield bash or something but i don't know man that that, that role is not balanced everyone's complaining about top and jungle right now and adc which i think all three have their weaknesses into the pros but 
mid and supports i don't see them complaining at all everyone's really happy because the role's by far the best right now dude mid has been the best or second best 10 seasons running that's There's the thing never... though the, the most it's like the biggest population of the game right midline they want to keep that player base the problem is they fun they fundamentally broke midline the entire intent was they're early game characters who roam and they aren't great late game and then I don't fucking remember, but it was like like seven years ago or something. I remember it because it was like Annie was like one of the first ones they did it. They're like, well, we should make them scale well. And it was like, okay, so now you're strong early and late and you get to roam so you control the game. What What is your weakness? Like as a role, what can't you do? Nothing. That's the thing. It's like in the center of the map. So you basically have a lot more options that other roles have in the game. Like once you see support start roaming, it's like, seven eight minutes in the game without their mobies or if like they just want to abandon their ezreal or something but for the most part mid lane has like complete map control even more than the jungler i think it's like a better jungle if you're playing like some like kiana that has like promo push potential and or talon but it depends i mean obviously assassins and mages are another topic which we're going to go into in a bit but mid lane just controls the entire map buffs buff fights riff herald dragon that's the thing like right top lane can only impact Rift for the most part, if you're using TP to lane, right? You can't go bot unless you're Shen or something. But mid lane, just Prima Prio, teleport rise, one shots waves, can go to jungle fights, can teleport across the map, just do anything they want, and they're always over leveled. So it's like, what can you actually do as an ADC or jungler if you're gonna like ever come across a mid laner one v one or something? But yeah, uh, at least in summation to the topic, I, I think supports have been power creep like motherfuckers like i did every single time i fight liana it's just it's like like why does her stun still stun for one second if it's a five second cooldown now yeah and same thing with liana it's like she has basically two aftershocks either her i mean they nerfed the duration of or they buffed the duration of aftershock it's like 20 seconds or something now and it's like her w's yeah. like on a five to ten second cooldown i don't know what it is the exact number but She's basically they, just has permanent armor and MR every fight. They give them low cooldowns because they're like, oh, they're support, right? Like, they need these base shit. I don't fucking know. And then, and then, like, you build cooldown reduction on supports, and all of a sudden, like, your five second Leona Q that stuns for one second ends up being like a three second cooldown. So it's, you know, root into Q into ult into Q, and then, like, you, you get to move for like two seconds, and then it's back into Q into root into Q. And it's just like, fuck. You know, I saw one dude on Twitter the other day. He was complaining. He was like, "Oh, it's too easy to get tenacity right now." And I'm like, "Oh, I saw that too." <laughs> was it the uh, the DOS guy from Europe or something? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "Dude, what the fuck do you imagine happening if people can't pick up thirty percent tenacity easily?" <laughs> he plays Thresh. He plays Not. He plays Leona. Like, how can they even complain? But yeah, this brings us to the equation. Like, do you think something like Brand one shotting you is less problematic or Brand support compared to like Leona one shotting you or is there supposed to be a balance between that? I think, honestly, I feel like there's no reason to ever play a tank top because tank supports are better. Just, like, not even... Not even trying to, like, make a joke. I, I legitimately think, like, if I played a tank top and they played a tank support, like, ignore everything. Like, ignore my level advantage and all that. I don't care if I have a level advantage, item advantage, everything. The tank supports are just so much better. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... And you've been like Diamond 1 Master, Grandmaster all season. Like when I play in High Challenger, I basically just see a Kali top, Rise top, Cassio top. I've even seen a Zier top. I've literally not seen any bruisers at all. It's really rare unless I have like a one trick or something, but no Aatrox, no Darius, no. Sometimes Mechan is a counter pick, but it's always the same overpower, like competitive pick champions I've seen higher ELO and Solokia. See, people make fun of me playing Aatrox. Like, oh, he's bad right now. And, okay, yes, he is bad right now, but. Literally, what am I going to be fighting in top lane? You know, let's say I pick Darius, right? I'm fighting a mage. Let's say I pick Aatrox. I'm still fighting a mage, you know? I'm probably going to be fighting a mage or an AD carry. Maybe sometimes I'll fight a bruiser. At the end of the day, though, like, might as well pick a champion who can do decently into them, I suppose. If you're not going to beat it, or if you're not going to play as them, you might as well play something that can do decent into them. Yeah, I 100% agree. Anyways, let's go on with topic number seven. Which is probably your favorite, stopwatch slash Zanyas. I just straight <laughs> remove stopwatch, remove the cooldown reduction from Zanyas. So, what would they replace the rune with? Because there's a rune for it, right? Inspiration tree? 
I, I mean, I, I don't really care. I mean, just anything. Literally, just make it like it, 12 minutes, you get 300 gold. <laughs> All right. So, no stopwatch, no Zanyas. I personally think the item's too cheap and too valuable. Either make the cooldown a lot longer. I think Jay's longer than Zanyas, is it? Or is it the same? No, it's definitely longer. Say that one more time. Is GA cooldown longer than Zanya's? Yeah, Zanya's is two minutes. GA is five. Wow, so you get two and a half Zanya's in between a GA yeah. block. That's actually... That's no, I, I think, honestly, having played a lot of Mord, I can tell you straight up, Zanya's having cooldown reduction is messed up. Like, the fact that you can go a 20% CDR item, then get Zanya's, and you're already at 30%. But, like, you've built defensively, but you still have enough... You know, your first item is probably like, you know, because for some reason, all the mage items that give 20% CDR are also amazing at burst. So oh, you've yeah. got burst and you've got sustain. Now you're tanky. Now you can't be focused. But you're two items in. How is that fair? Like, it's not even, it's, it's like you're so, it's so fast that mages become, well, they just outscale you. It's so fast. It's funny because they're also really strong early game. I like, I see level six Syndra one shot me. I'm like, okay, she probably, she's probably fed. She's like zero, zero, one. And then she solo kills me and I check her item. Yeah. She has like a lost chapter and a D ring. I guess got hundred to zero. Oh yeah. Lost chapter is fucked. Yeah. We'll talk about that later, but yeah. is that all for the, uh, your favorite item? Yeah. No, just remove stopwatch, remove the cooldown reduction from Zanya. It's like, seriously, like put that into perspective. Imagine guardian angel at 10% CDR and you could go black cleaver, guardian angel, 30% CDR, but also I have a revive and armor and damage and shit. And you'd be like, well, that's not fair. Yeah, that's that's how it feels. And GA is more... It's their same price, right? They're both 2800 I believe, right? GA is 2800 Zanias is 2900 but the reason Zanias yeah. feels so cheap is everyone can just sink into an e early Seekers or something. Yeah, makes sense. Anyways, is this more of a bias approach? Because I was one of the people that always would build Executioner, but I think the item is super good right now based off of the Drakes and such and how the best champions function basically with conqueror what's your thoughts on executioner um, or morello as well it probably is too cost efficient i mean it's probably needed to come up to a thousand gold i mean it feels shitty to nerf it because they've added so much healing but it's like because they've added so much healing it's it's a little bit too much right now like it feels shitty that like if i go like if someone goes executioners and someone doesn't go executioners it's only an 800 gold difference but it's like the complete difference between getting shut the fuck down and not. Right. So why do you think you see champions like I was watching your stream earlier playing Aatrox the Fiora and you both got executioner early. Why do you think people aren't building Bramble Vest instead? Uh it's a little bit harder to proc. And I feel like for a lot of people, it's like, okay, if I'm gonna deter here into another item, I might as well try to get some damage out of it. Right, and it's more situational, right? So if you're playing against like, a Vlad, it's not going to auto attack you mid to late game. Yeah, you're never going to proc I mean, it yeah, off you. Yeah, because like I think in that game too, I was up against uh, it was just like a Swain and something else, and it was like, well, he's never going to attack me. You know, I'm going to need to proc it on him. Mm -hmm. And the item, I mean, it's 200 gold more or 200 gold cheaper than Bramble, so I feel like it should definitely yeah. be upped a bit for sure. Either 1k or 900 or 950, or even more. Honestly, who knows. The stats are bad, they're just too active, or the pass is just too good. Any other thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, people say I'm biased, but, I mean, truly, it does feel super cheesy. It, it does feel incredibly unfair. Same uh, with Morello. Yeah. Remember when people would just rush um, Oblivion Orb? Now they're just completing Morello ASAP, because there's so many champs that have, like, built-in sustain, again, with the runes and the, the drakes, that... Morello is becoming even more cost efficient to rush and complete as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to like the player base is like, oh, there's too much damage, there's too much damage. Now there's a lot of healing, right? But now you can shut down the healing and you can't have a player base that says there's too much damage, we want to reduce the damage. So Riot adds, you know, ways to heal and keep into a fight despite the damage. You can't then say like, oh, but, you know, we want executioners to shut all that down because it's like, okay. So then we're back to too much damage. Yeah, I agree. So they have to definitely figure something out there. Anyways, topic number nine, Crick Cloak. So I'm sure you're aware. You're seeing a lot of Caitlyn's go triple cloak or 
quadra yeah, cloak. I, honestly, I feel like it's not really a crit cloak issue. I feel like what is that item? Um, Storm razor. Yeah, was it? Storm razor. I feel like storm razor is just so overtuned that you can kind of just sit on it as your main completed item for a very long time. Yeah, they've like changed it three times. It was like first hit gives you a guaranteed crit, and then it made it pretty bad. Now yeah. it's decent again, and I see a lot of people just build that item. And you can't even, like since you play mostly melee champs, if you're playing it's an ADC that builds that. I have to, I forgot about press two attack. I'm talking about that too. Man, ADCs do like ADCs honestly do way too much damage to have an item that slows you and like sets up another auto attack. Cause it's like. It, like, I don't know, there's one game I was playing Mord, and I hadn't gotten the Seeker's Arm Guard because I was against Akali, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a Ninja Dabby, and the Caitlyn comes at me, it's like auto, you know, obviously it slows me, then she chases me, auto, auto, I'm at half health already, it's like, okay, great, you know? It's like, they outrange you, and you can't even chase them, so like, unless you're playing a hard engage, or have like, home guard TP on top of them or something, it's just super hard to get onto them or stick onto them, to just yeah. have every advantage on you, especially because they also have heal for the most part. Yeah, it's pretty untouchable. So, do you think the crit items like IE Essence Reaver or Balance, or should be also change in some way? I was kind of okay with IE and Essence Reaver, but now that they've added a third damage crit item, I feel like it's just because damage, like when you're stacking crit, AD is worth a lot more on you, right? Because like mm -hmm. you're critting, so literally like two AD on Caitlyn is four AD per hit, right? Yeah and or more i don't know but and so when you when you have three items now that give damage and crit i feel like it's becoming way too easy to turn that crit multiplier into way too much damage i 100 percent agree yeah i don't know I, i'm just seeing like it used to be somewhat reasonable i feel if i went the ninja tabby if i built an armor item like omen or something like i, I felt like reasonably okay i can somewhat tank and mitigate the adc and now it's just like the only way to mitigate an ADC is to kill him at this point. <laughs> just you, you can't really tank him anymore. And this just goes more and more into the fact that tanks just aren't worth playing if you're well, I mean if you're support, sure, but like you just can't. You just can't as a tank do anything. There's it, like your item I don't know. Cause it's not even like Omen is a bad item. It's just like you're so overwhelmed by the amount of DPS being output at you. Right, and who do you think are the best ADCs right now? Like Kaiza, maybe Lucian. I don't know. What do you think is the best? Do you think mages are better as ADCs right now? Um, situationally. I mean, I would say Kaiza is still obviously really good. Zai is still really good. Though I have seen a lot of people stop playing Zaya. I don't know what's up with that. I used to see her every game. Now, not so much. Not sure why she got minimal early game durability nurse but for the most part i think her dps is insane especially um, against tanks yeah i mean just i mean a lot i mean yeah it's kaisa lucian caitlin pretty much every game ezreal is also pretty good a lot of misfortune too with the quad oh, yeah. dorms <laughs> misfortunes like misfortune and another leona right no one plays in hyla until the point where they got like 10 buffs in a row similar somewhat to echo but echo is like a bit more played but now it's like leona and misfortune have gone like 20 buffs in a row and are just super strong so um overall i'd actually say i haven't really liked mages in bot lane what do you uh mean? i think adcs are extremely good having an adc is extremely good in fact having a mage mid and an adc bot lane just gives you a strong team fight gives you a strong presence like Heimer is great and all, but like so many times I have a Heimer on my team and it doesn't feel like they know what they're doing and they just screw up and I, I don't know. I feel like, oh great, now we don't have an ADC. Yeah, I feel like if you have a Fizz damage mid, you just go Mage Bot most likely, Syndra, Heimer, whatever, and vice versa. But for the most part, I think once they got the crit items buffed with Essence Reaver and such, and they brought in Storm Razor, I think it's definitely better have an ADC on your team rather than Mage bottom. Yeah, because a lot of the game too, like a lot of what you do, a lot of, I guess what a lot of people have learned how to team fight kind of just boils down to playing around the ADC, you know? And it feels weird when you don't have an ADC, it's like, okay, you know, like, it kind of like throws everything into whack. Yeah, I agree. Anyways, let's go to topic number 10. New MR item or Spectre Cal buff. So, what do you think about this? 
Uh, I mean, Spectre Scarlet just straight needs a buff. It's insane that tanks can't, like, tanks and bruisers cannot lane against mages, and Riot's just like, okay, whatever. And it's just so expensive for the stats it gives, like, uh huh. the passive isn't even, it's good, but it's like, it's not the best. And I feel like they definitely have more armor items rather than MR items. And, like, why don't we have a an MR or J or something? Why can't we, like, have a Guardian Angel that can build out of a Negatron or something like that, you know? Like, is it that uh -huh. big of a deal? It's basically the same concept, but you get armor or MR rather than armor now. I think, one, Negatron needs more build options because, like, there's just not enough champions that, oh, no, I'm against a mage. Let me grab a Negatron, you know? And it's not like a Negatron reduces their damage to zero. I mean, for Christ's sake, I, I was playing against a Yasuo that rushed Negatron, and I still massacred him. Slower, but, you know, it's not like 40 MR, like, oh, I do no damage. Right. You know, it's, it's just kind of like, I hope I don't get one shot now. And the problem is, what can you do with it? You can do Wit's End, and that's basically it. And Wit's End is kind of restrictive as to who can build it. Yeah, and it's better on melee compared to range, obviously, but you don't really play range top, so... I, I mean, the issue for me is, like... Actually, I forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say? It was pretty good, but I forgot what I was going to say. Damn, that sucks. Something I wanted to bring I just up. think, I mean, Spectre's Cowl should... Honestly, what they really should do is bring it down to 1100 gold and give it 30 MR and make the healing on it not based on your health regen, but just like a scaling amount. So, like, it doesn't, like, work really well on, say, Darius, but really shit on Aatrox, and kind of okay on Orn. That's weird. That's weird. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I remember. So, I feel like the armor, penetra armor penetration versus the MR penetration items are just, again, since there's a lot more armor items rather than MR items, then buying Magic Pen becomes just that much stronger than buying Armor Pen. And I feel like the Armor Pen items aren't even that good on their own. In my opinion, yeah. at least. Like, more Reminder and Lord Doms aren't the best compared to their price. Because it's like... Again. They're pretty crap. I mean, the big problem they always run into is they don't want to make them good because then 80 carries get them and they blow the hell out of everyone. But then it's like... You know, the characters who really would want... Like, let's say I'm playing... Actually, let's say someone actually played a tank top. It's like... Well, Lord Dominic's kind of sucks. Like, there's kind of no point. Like, just leave the tank... Eventually, you won't be able to hurt them, sure. Just kind of, like, let the AD carry kill them in team fights, you know? Yeah, so give us more items, like, get a Bork com combined with, like, Lord Doms or something. Like, a new item like that, maybe. I mean, really, what they need is... They need, like, an item... Kind of like how they have, like, the cooldown magic resist health items. But they, they need one like that that's, like, more, like, offensively minded. So I can... Like, Spear Visage, but let's say, instead of 30% more healing, let's say... I don't even know. Like, it, it did, like, the Blade of the Run King effect or something. I don't know. I was thinking something... Like, you know how Mundo's E works when it, like, stacks MR? Maybe an item that, like, every time you auto, you get extra MR percentage or MR on hit. Was that how, like, Witsun used to be? Yeah. Oh, that was old Witsun? So yeah. Maybe make a percentage and scaling or something? I don't know. It's not a terrible idea. I mean, really what it comes down to is everyone by the end of the game has gotten an armor item, Guardian Angel or Ninja Tabby or Hourglass or something. But by the end of the game, like having to get into an MR item feels so unnatural, typically screws up your build path. Only a few champions can really comfortably grab, say, Spirit Visage or Wit's End. Agreed. Like a lot, a lot of champions are just kind of like, I guess I'll go adaptive because that's really the best I can do and adaptive's not really that great. Yeah, it's terrible actually in my opinion. I, I I honestly think adaptive should just be raised straight up to 450 HP. It should give 60 I'm 450 HP. Uh, fighting into adaptive should feel like fighting into omen when you're a crit AD carry. Like it should be a noticeable decrease to your damage. Mhm. Mm and it's more like I feel like Spear Visage is, there's like some offensive threat to it, and Adaptive is just offensive. Like, there needs to be a fine balance between that. Either like, Adaptive is really strong defensively, or, yeah, Spear Visage is really strong offensively. Just, there has to be a balance there. Yeah, I mean, Riot can't keep whining about, oh, we want tanks in top lane, but then refuse to make tanks possibly viable against mages, you know?
Like, like you can't, you can't say we want Bruzus to suck against tanks, but also tanks should suck against mages because that they're not going to be fixed. Yeah, sounds about right. So, topic eleven, we kind of spoke about this for the most part. You want to add anything onto mid lane? How oppressive it is, right? Honestly, I was thinking about this because, like, I've said this a lot. You take any champion top, and if they're playable mid lane, they're stronger because the lane's position is just better. And honestly, maybe mid lane should just get an experience reduction. Maybe the mid lane minions should just be worth less. Honestly, that's not the worst idea. From what I've seen, like when TF Blade plays like Trinmere or Jax mid, he, he feels a lot more contributing than when he plays at top from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, if top lane is going to be the far side of the map, why not have it be like, okay, you play your late game characters there, you know? And then in return, mid lane, sure, they get to roam and rotate and everything, but they get less experience for that position advantage, you know? Yeah, that definitely can be something that can maybe happen. I like that idea. It's unique, and honestly, maybe they should, they should try it out, quite frankly. Anything else about mid lane? Or... Uh, that's basically it. I mean, yeah, we spoke about it a lot. And same with this, we spoke about this for the most part, like how junglers will fall behind, how mid and top. Well, not, I mean, in competitive, you agree with me that top is more impactful than solo queue, right? Uh, in solo queue, top is more impactful? No, in, in competitive. Oh, um, yeah. Well, I mean, I would say that's because games don't tend to like snowball out of control so much in competitive. So top is more of a chance to like play the good farm game and get you know that strong mid game and there's before, more organized like, play on the teleports and objective priorities and fights yeah yeah like you like in solo queue it's too often that like you're looking at 10 minutes and if you've played a good safe top lane on a late game character you're at 10 minutes and you're like okay we can start going for and like you realize oh, it's like like 12 to 4 like the game's kind of like settled you know yeah pretty much so how much do you think top lane counter pick matters right now and what way are, too like, the, fucking much. What are the blind picks? Like Akali, maybe? Rise? That, I mean, that kind of maybe, because they can be flexed a little bit. I mean, really, and I've had this conversation, nerfing Aatrox because he was a good blind pick was so wrong. Like, make better blind picks. Don't just nerf the one or two that are good at being blind picked. Like, you know, you, you can't just be like, no champion can be blind picked, because then you're ending in this shitty counter pick meta. It's a lot easier if you had way more blind pickable champions because you can't blind pick tanks. You'll get countered by like an AD carry or a mage or something. You can't blind pick a bruiser. Once again, you know, at this point, <laughs> a tank, an AD carry, or a mage will counter pick you. And even in the mages, I mean, right now you looked at it. I mean, they did nerf Cassidy, but Cassidy was being used to counter pick mages in top. <laughs> it's just like, there's nothing you can do that's safe, really. Exactly, and that's why I think like Olaf is so strong in the jungle right now. He really doesn't have a counter. Like the only counter that can potentially beat him at level three, in my opinion, if it's like a full out one v one to death where he like keeps his W, is like potentially Trundle. But I feel like that's why he's such a good jungle. He's just full clearly at level four, and he doesn't really have a counter. So if you just first pick him, you have the dragon priority. You have the better one v one, better two v two for the most part, and there's just you have a higher chance of winning just by picking him in this current meta. So Dude, I way I think everyone included, I mean me, but everyone also way undervalued how much the conquer change was going to help Olaf. I thought it was really good for him. I don't know. I don't know. I saw it, but I mean, it was like okay, so it's a little bit of a buff early game, nerf late game. But then the thing with Olaf, he's an early one, game jump. Yeah, he doesn't really care about late game. But two between his E and Black Cleaver. Very rarely do games actually get to the point where, as compared to old Conqueror, that it would be a nerf, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, like, super rare. And very often, I just see... Like, Olaf always kind of sometimes would, like, run down multiple people. But way too fucking often these days, I see Olaf just ram the fuck out of two people and just <laughs> kill them. Yeah, I'm pretty much the Olaf Kanoiser. I love that champion, and... The more I played him, the more I understood that he's definitely a bad or bad spot for the enemy team. He's a great spot for your team if you have him. Yeah. And again, in this meta, he's just he overpowers everyone else and has a lot more one v two potential than before. I mean, I, I was actually thinking about this. One thing they should consider doing is kind of retuning his ult a little bit. Instead of being thirty percent damage at all ranks, maybe make it like 20, 25, 30. 30% damage or even eighty. 
Yeah, like well, because his ult gives you thirty percent bonus AD plus the flat oh, amount. Right. Wait, really? So I didn't it... know that. Yeah, no, it, it's a really powerful ult. I have to look this up. It's like he's my third favorite champ. Wow, you're right. Yeah. Oh no. Wait. Wait. It's actually thirty percent. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's thirty percent total AD bonus. Hence why conqueror and you know just building warriors and black cleaver like if you actually look at his alt numbers in game like do it next time you're playing the champion and you're gonna be like wait what uh yeah his alt's pretty good like i knew how this alt worked i knew he gave you ad but i never really checked the ratio yeah. of percentage scaling it's crazy that's really good it, yeah it's really high I, I mean if they just made that 20 25 30 it would tone him down a little bit in the early game like keep his late game Especially because, like, you don't really want to fuck with Olaf in a way that hurts his late game, or else he's not going to be very fun to play. Right, remember what happened to Olaf, like, a few years ago, back when Voibe was playing at top? I think he just went into, like, full trout. No one played him ever again for years, and then he became good for a bit, I think, last year. Maybe the, towards the end of Season 7 or something, but this is probably the best he's been in a really long time, and he might just be brought back to the, the coffin, honestly. Let's hope not. They should nerf him a bit, but... They should buff jungle in theory, so he can actually still remain viable. No, I mean, I, I think his early game is roughly fine, because he's kind of immobile. He can't get over walls. He relies on hitting, like, multiple skill shots. Like, his ganks are, they're okay, but not the greatest, you know? He's definitely prone to dying during the gank, too. I've noticed that, because right. he doesn't have an escape, and he's not very, he's not like, he has no inherent tankiness early game, you know? Mm -hmm. He can drain tank for sure, but, like, and so I think really they should just focus on like his ult power play. Just tone it down a little bit in the early game. I definitely agree. So let's go to topic number 13, which is, again, one of your personal favorites, mages. But mostly, in theory, I want to go over Loot and Zyko. I think that item is, or Lost Chapter into Loot and Zyko. I think that item is super strong. It shouldn't, it shouldn't give 20% CDR, in my opinion. I think that's crazy. I think Lost Chapter is nuts. Yeah, 1300 gold. I mean, it, it literally comes down to, so you can get TM out and they can get Lost Chapter, and it's like, okay, who gets the better out of that one? You know, they get the all in and they get the Wave Clare through infinite mana. Right. It's like, okay, what? And then the thing is, like, TM out builds into shit items. Lost Chapter builds into the best items in the game. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. The gold should definitely go up. I mean, it's 40 AP. That's blasting one, 850 gold. 300 mana. That's like... I don't know, Sapphire, Crystal, I guess. That's like 350. And then you got your Haste, 10% CDR for 1300 gold. And the other stats that you got. Then you got the, uh, basically, the what's that item called? Catalyst proc, which is like when you level up, you get more mana rather than... I think Catalyst gives HP and MR. Or mana, yeah. sorry. I mean, I think... Honestly, they should just hit the AP down to like 30. Just right. like take away a little bit of its all-in potential. So, like, okay, they go Lost Chapter. At least, you know, like, if I built, like, pure damage, I could probably win that trade. But right, right now, it's just, it's good at everything. They have Lost Chapter, and it's like, they have the everything item. All right. And I just looked up. It's actually, that that was the old Catalyst. I guess that's why no one builds anymore. It's mostly used for Abyssal or something. So, my apologies for that one. Anyways, we've spoken about 12 and 13 already for the most part. So, let's just go to 14 state of 80 mids like i think we kind of spoke about this earlier before if you an 80 mid you kind of force to pick an ap bot or you might have problems unless again your top goes ap as well but you might be lacking some magic damage you know i really i kind of dislike the fact that if you pick a full physical team you're kind of doomed because there's so many goddamn physical champions in the game that mm -hmm. it feels like almost unfair that like if mid wants to play a physical champion it's like top and jungle are forced to have to pick magical, but what if they don't want to? But if you all pick physical, you're just doomed. Right, because 80 junglers are better right now than AP. And it's like, I've from what I've seen, I think you win more when you have all AP team rather than all AD team because of the item disparity. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think if you have... If you, if you can get more magic damage sources on your team, because people always say, oh, mages, they lack sustain damage but realistically you blow someone up early in a fight three seconds later you can do it again with your mage comp it's like 
oh no, like, you killed someone instantly and then had to wait three seconds before doing it again. <laughs> Big whoop. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. Anything else? Like, what do you think of Assassin mids like Kiana Talon just one shot way with Tiamat one spell and then just look for plays with their movies on side lanes or enemy jungler? I'm not really sure what the fuck they're going for with those champions. I, I really don't get it. It's like they've admit that AD assassins just won't scale. So then they just give them shitloads of mobility and wave clear, and they're like, just go win the game by level 10. <laughs> and if you don't do that, well, oh well. It's kind of like, remember old Aesol? Aesol was like the only, I think, AP roamer. Unless you like want to go way back with like AP silent mid. But for the most part, the roamers mid are just AD assassins, and Aesol's kind of just forgotten about. I feel like Talon's E definitely needs some mana on it, or he definitely needs something done to him. Same with maybe Kiana. I don't know, maybe Buffer. And I think she's weak jungle, but she's pretty strong mid lane. So I think I should look for something on those two champions, change something about them, potentially, or other AD assassins. Kiana has been broken for such a long time. Honestly, I, I've even stopped even noticing her because, like, so much shit's broken right now. <laughs> it's like, if Kiana's, it's like, oh, okay, Kiana. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, we need more bands. What do you think about that? 10 bands if, or 20 bands? If there was, like, people wouldn't even use bands on overpowered shit because there's still too much. Like, if you had two bands, I would just ban shit that's good against me at that point. Right. And if I, like, knew a one trick was in queue, maybe it's like, okay, uh, well, I just fought a Fiora player. I'll, I'll, I'll put a ban on Fiora then, you know? Right. And if you got, like, competitive players, Academy or LCS players, you never ban anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> why can't we just use their bands instead? Because you still be with like competitive level players, right? I mean, you're not that low elo anymore. No, I I really dislike the people who are like, oh, learn to play against it. It's like yeah, I want to be at my worst, playing at the worst against the best things possible, so I can improve or something. But it's like you're playing solo, you're not gonna improve anyways. Let's be real. All right, fifteen conqueror nerfs the ranged and melee. Sorry, both of them. Um. Honestly, I, I I mean everything I said they would do to conquer happened. It just it became way overvalued on some champions, and yeah, that that was uh, I, the simple math would tell you that would happen, and they just ignored it and went forward and just brute forced it into the game. I was thinking about that because what you said this time was what I thought would happen last time. Like we thought conquer was going to be got here on mages and it wasn't i forgot for what aspect what was it do you remember why it only proc on autos or something how was the old car and remember this stuff it was like recent um so at least on ranged mages the reason old conquer wasn't too great was it was slow to stack and it uh yeah, but how did you stack it um you could say it with abilities or auto attacks but it went away in three seconds on them but uh, now that they keep seconds. it for I think it was, two, it was very short. I think it was two, yeah. But Kindred players still ran it because Kindred's like a full yeah. DPS champ. But so. now that they can keep it for the full duration, especially because the big thing is that their spells double proc it as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it. yeah. I mean, I don't really mind Rise with Conqueror. Every time Rise has gone Conqueror, I've actually destroyed him because Phase Rush is actually a huge part of Rise. Like, his mobility from Phase Rush is actually really important. And all the people who go Conquer, they just get dicked on by CC. Right, and but, I feel like they uh, already have a lot of healing from, like, Ravenous Hunter and potentially Taste of Blood in lane, so... Yeah, I mean, now that the healing's been nerfed on range, it kind of killed it as a real option for most champions. Mm -hmm. Like, it went from 15 to 8% healing was... Honestly, that was a really fucking big nerf. It yeah, kind of surprised huge. me. I, I like it, though. I mean, it's I, I don't think Conquer should be on range champions, so I think it's fine, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Conquer should be for melee, because it's really hard being a melee character right now, and it should be away from melee characters, especially if they're doing damage and hitting their abilities. It should be a way for them to keep in a fight a little bit longer. That's what I'm thinking, though. Like, you see Kendra as a champion. She has, like, two viable keystones. Conquer and... Press the attack, right? The third is like Hail of Blaze, and that's like probably not that good, but it's like they have nerfed Conqueror, so she's basically forced to press the attack now. And press the attack for range is already super OP, in my opinion, which we'll talk about in a bit. 
but I feel like they might potentially nerf that. So like, what is Kindred gonna take if she is in the spot right now? Lethal tempo. I mean, I really don't mind Kindred being bad. Come on, I... junglers suck. I... Of all, like Kindred just has nothing interesting about the character. She does nothing fun, nothing interesting. She just she kills at you, and she just starts right clicking, and that's not interesting. It's Trendemir, okay. Jax. Yeah, but at least our melee, like there's some, like melee gives you something you can do, like options. But Kindred, it's like she just kills at you and starts autoing you from range. And, okay, I mean you're dead. Same with eighty carries. Uh. I mean, Tristana. if an carry could jungle, that'd be a bit different. Like, the reason Graze isn't that terrifying is that he gets blocked by turrets, he gets blocked by minions, so you feel like you can do something, but Kindred literally just queues at you and starts autoing. Sure. All right, Ryder, if you're listening, please buff Graze. Thank you. Uh, do you think it's worth talking about lethality items? Like, the new, there's like um, a new one, I believe. God, can we just remove Sanguine Blade? I think that item sucks now. I think it's super situational. It is, but it still fucking blows as a top laner, because who uses it the most? Top laners. And why do they use it? So they can crush you 1v1. It's just a super lame, cheesy item at this point. I've seen it on, like, Fiora, Jax, Nocturne top. What else? Um, Nocturne's a big one. Uh, Trindomir sometimes. Um, Clyde. Oh god, Clyde uses Clyde it pretty well. Builds it really. Yeah. Oh, if you go down Clyde, because the thing is, it okay. The thing about Sanguine Blade is that uh, it procs if there's not two turrets or two champions in sight, right? Right. So normally that's okay, not that big a deal. But think about this: not a champion who can split push, mm -hmm. and he can knock turrets really quickly with 18 lethality, 80 percent X speed, 50 damage. So, you think Sanguine Blade should be nerfed, but what do you think of the other item? I forgot what it's called. It's like Glaive or something? I don't know. 11 lethality? Uh, it's pretty cheap. The Umbral Glaive? I mean, right. it's alright. I've never actually built it. It's more of a like Pike support item, I'd say, or something. But Yeah, I mean, it's clearly meant to be the support lethality item. Alright. Last topic, uh, unless you want to talk about something else for the last few Oh, months. I just want to say the, the Spell Shield lethality item, I keep meaning to go it like i keep looking at it and being like oh that'd be neat i should go that and i never actually get to it they kind of made it like old banshees right yeah Edge of Night, right um, anyway i think it's i prefer to the old way where like if i'm playing gray's jungle which is not even the best in the karthus and i'm going lethality i get it early just so i can activate it the moment he's gonna ult so i feel like it was a lot better like that so you can actually decide when you want to utilize it but i mean yeah. I feel like both Banshee's Veil and it take too long to reactivate. I, I, I really think they should just push that down to 30 seconds. I know I know they say, oh, we don't want to do that because then during a siege it would keep activating every minion wave, but it's like, when does that really happen anymore? Like, how many times do you really just five-man sieging a turret multiple minion waves in a row? Like, how often does that truly happen? When the enemy team's open. All right, next topic, and potentially last, unless we want to add some bonus topics here. We're approaching an hour, so let's wrap this up hopefully soon. Presti attack, we spoke about earlier, range versus melee. So I think honestly, I think Presti attack should get a twenty damage nerf on ranged. It should be twenty flat, so that it mostly nerfs the early game, not so much the late game. But Presti attack is being abused on so many ranged characters to just absolutely kerplode people. Lucian, Kindred. Guys, uh, don't forget Tristana. Tristana. Yeah, that's why Tristana was so like meta and get better player level two all in. And that's yeah, the thing. No. Like, I feel like you should definitely buff press attack for melee because there's pretty much I don't think anyone takes press attack for the most part. Camille and that's like conqueror now. Who else? Can't think of any right now. No, I, it's because they overvalued conqueror in my opinion. Like, it used to actually like they. I don't know. Like, it used to be way more niche, and now it's not niche. Like, they made it not niche, and I think that was the opposite of what they were trying to do, so I'm not quite sure how they fucked it up so badly. So how could they like make it better for melees or like make it more um, situational? Honestly, I, I feel like what they should... Mm, do something where like... 
if you're melee and you proc it, you get a slight amount of damage. I was gonna say like attack speed. Oh no, that would work too. Yeah, no. I mean, either either of those are great. Just something where like, if you're melee, you get a slight extra little oomph, you know. And how would it scale based off level? Yeah, I mean, you could just make it something simple, like even something like you get ten to thirty percent attack speed after proccing it. Like even that would feel really nice, you know. Yeah, I I definitely agree. Definitely synergizes does it well with the extra damage you would do too. So yeah. All right. Any other topics you want to talk about in general? Um, I mean, just fucking God, I hate top lane. I hate this meta. I hate that melee has become so shit. Okay, uh, I agree. I think range champs highly overpower melee champs. But like, aside from that, what do you think makes top lane not the best? The problem with top lane right now is they can't win their own lane. Like, it just it just feels like the game. Like historically speaking, top lane used to be more about the mid game, right? Right. Like you weren't there for the early game; you were there more for like the level nine, you know. But but level nine, like the game is starting to like wrap up almost, you know. And so you're like you're pressured to play faster and faster. But you know, going back, like okay, so mid lane has gotten way better in the late game. AD carries have gotten better early game, you know. And it just feels like the the pace of the game has increased way fast, but top lane hasn't really kept pace with it. And all the other lanes are power creep, but top lane hasn't kept pace with it. And now you're seeing like the mid laners and the bot laners are starting to go top lane because the top laners for their own lane haven't <laughs> kept pace with the game. Yeah, it's really weird. I've seen a lot more veins and Lucian tops recently as well. Dude, vein is fucked. Honestly, I I truly believe. They need to like they need to admit that Vayne is not a bot laner. If your entire kit from the ground up, your entire kit is meant to counter bruisers and tanks, right? Then you're not a bot laner. Like don't balance her for bot lane, balance her for top lane. And in top lane, she's just not balanced. It's actually crazy. Like now that I think about it, like not about how much the game has developed, you never think about Tristana top, Vayne top, Lucian top. It's actually just weird to me. Not, like It randomly just happens. Like, okay, Koreans are doing it. Let's just copy them. It's happening competitive. But then you think about it. It's like, wait, why are ADCs play, being played mid-top? Because that was like a season one thing or season two. I don't remember. Yeah. When like Ash was mid or quirky or something. I don't know. But Well, I mean, the original response to that, the original way they stopped that from happening, like if you're thinking way back, was they gave bruisers like these super overstat rank one effects. Like Jarvan got like what was it? it was like he got like 15 armor 15 attack speed from his rank 1 e and then it doubled when he used the flag you know right. and he doesn't have the armor anymore so i mean some people won't understand but that's kind of what they did they were just like okay bruisers just get like super fucking super inflated abilities and shit and you just can't 1v1 them they're just too good and that's how they got eventually they got range out of top lane but these days i feel like like, what's even the right way to put it? It's like, you have champions like Camille, right? And her rank 1 effects are good, but they're not, like, outstandingly superb. And that's because she's so ridiculous late game. And she is ridiculous even now. Like, she's obviously the number 1 pick, and she has been the number 1 pick for top lane for quite some time. Because she's kind of insane. But at the same time, she can't really deal with AD carries because enough power creep and her rank 1 abilities... You know, you have press the attack. Lucian is just going to power through her passive, power through her E, power through her Q. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, I mean, I think at a certain point, what they need to do is go to some of these bruisers who cannot reasonably deal with ranged characters like uh, Darius, like, um, you know, the ones who aren't at the risk of going mid lane and taking over mid lane, so to speak. So That's like, the thing, um, like Juggernaut meta is what you're referring to, right? Back when like Darius, Garen got huge buffs, or they got reworked, yeah. or whatever. So like, take Garen, take Darius, take um, Scion, and just give them like 38 starting MR, so that they actually become first pickable against uh, mages. But... So that like, if I if I pick Darius, I get 38 MR. I might have to worry about an 80 carry, sure, but I don't have to worry about like Oriana top, you know. <laughs> I definitely think that's a good idea. I don't know why I've not done that for the most part, but if you look at like the recent meta, you've seen a lot of 
we've seen Garen mid, we've seen Garen ADC, so it's like, why can't we have champs like Darius be that effective as well? Or I mean, we've seen also Sun mid, but actually, we know we've seen them all. To be honest, we've seen Darius ADC. I think what's his face played it, Teddy. Yeah, it's they've all been played. So maybe you're wrong. Maybe Bruisers are OP. Hash. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I think a lot of it comes down. I mean, what I don't know. I, I think Doran Shield should get some scaling, so it doesn't feel like you've kind of wasted an item after your first pack, right? Like, even a little bit of extra healing, just so it remained a little bit more effective to the second pack, because bruisers kind of do suck until level three. They need to be able to get to level three safely, so Doran Shield is supposed to take care of that. But then the problem is you you're still getting zoned off CS. You still kind of have not that great of an item, and so. A champion like Lucian will keep beating you even after your first back, even after your second back. And, you know, let's say I'm playing Kled, for example. It's really rough to kind of get into the game against these ranged picks, A, before the game ends, and B, into a position, um, well, where I can beat him because it's just, it's going to take so long. And honestly, it's actually what I was saying on stream. It, it really is almost a troll pick at this point to pick a bruiser top because you pick a bruiser, they pick a mage ADC. You're kind of like sing singling to your team. You're saying like, you're going to have to puppy guard me all early game. And it's almost like a dick move when you think about it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so I've picked Jax. So you're, you're telling your drinker like, okay, you're going to have to spend the entire game. T you know, at a certain point, it's like, okay, dick move. Why, why are you doing that to your jungler? Oh, welcome to season 10, I guess. So, I guess we can wrap it up. I don't know if we can make this like a monthly thing if you're interested, if the community's interested. I think we both have a lot of knowledge and time to spare because we're both, you know, streamers, content creators. But definitely a good hour and five minutes, six, seven minutes. So, thank you for your time, Hash. I enjoyed it. If you have All any right. other final words, everyone knows your channel, Super Top Ashinshin, twitch.tv slash Ashinshin. Stream is 12 hours a day minimum now that his girlfriend's yeah. gone, right? You got nothing yeah. else to do. So, any yeah. last words? You want to curse out Riot Games again? Bounce, um, bounce team? I mean, please just don't. Like, please just stop bruisers from being troll picks. <laughs> it's not fun. I don't like burdening my team, you know? True. I agree. So, less mages, less AD carries top lane, buff bruisers, buff tanks, make the game more balanced around everything rather than just select a few things all right thank you for your time hash we'll keep in touch all right see ya love you man see ya all right there's an hour and 10 minute segment with the one and only super top if you guys enjoyed make sure to leave a like let me know in the comments if you want to see this again because me and hash have definitely had sessions like these where we just spoke about the game in the past but we never really thought about making it a potential like not really a podcast more of a Let's save Riot Games. I mean, the, we all love the game League of Legends, right? But the thing is, like, there's stuff in it that can be changed, whether it's a community, how people act, you know, people trolling, running it down, etc. And there's no tribute anymore. But the balance thing, I'd say, is the most important right now. And there, are, I mean, the game is good, but again, there are stuff that can be changed that aren't very hard. So, yeah, let us know. Thanks for watching. I love you all, and see you guys soon. Peace.